All right, so we've learned about the tangent line approximation to a function. That this is the best linear approximation to a function. But it should be natural to ask, you know, why should I stop at linear when, you know, we know so much about quadratic functions? So I could easily ask, you know, a linear function is a degree one polynomial. Like, why don't I take the best degree two polynomial to my function? Like, a line can only be close to a curve, you know, for so long because the curve is curved and the line is straight. You know, how close could I approximate my function if I were able to use a quadratic, so I could use a parabola, whose curvature could sort of more closely match the graph of the function near this point. And this sort of comes up naturally, that a whole lot of functions are going to have the same linear approximation at a point. So, you know, a linear approximation to y equals f of x, at x is equal to a, is, you know, a degree one polynomial. It's something of the form m x plus b. And then the question is, you know, what if I wanted the best quadratic approximation, something of the form a x squared plus b x plus c? This is the best you know, degree one polynomial approximation. y equals f of x at x is equal to a. So what is the best quadratic approximation? Or degree two polynomial approximation? So, you know, to sort of like compare and contrast. Here's y is equal to e to the x. And then here's the best linear approximation at x is equal to zero, which was L of x, which was one plus x, or x plus one if you prefer from our previous calculation. The question is, you know, looking at this picture, I can tell that I could do better I could get a better approximation of e to the x by using a uh, parabola because e to the x is curved and concave up. That you could sort of imagine that if I take a broad parabola, I should be able to sort of fit this curve a little bit better. And eventually it's going to fall behind because we've seen that e to the x grows faster than any quadratic like x squared. But I should be able to find you know, a quadratic function, q of x, that fits the curve a little bit better close to x is equal to zero. So, like, what did, um, what did L of x satisfy? Well, it satisfied that it, go, it went through the same point as the function, and it had the same derivative as the function. And when I consider a quadratic, I can not only make sure it goes through the same point as the function and has the same derivative, but I have another degree of freedom. And I can make sure it has the same second derivative. That I can make sure that it um, has the same concavity as the function, and it sort of matches the concavity in some sense. So, um, so we we want to approximate uh, f of x near x is equal to a. And the best linear approximation, l of x, satisfied, firstly, that l of a is equal to f of a, and the slope of that line, l prime of a, 
was f prime of a. And that's as best you can do. You can't ask any more of a linear equation than to go through a point and have a certain slope. But when you have a quadratic, you have another degree of freedom. So I can do sort of one step better. I can have the same value as the function, the same derivative of the function, and the same second derivative. So that's quadratic approximation. should have, um, so I'm calling this q of x, so q of x should satisfy that q of a is f of a, q prime of a is f prime of a, and also q double prime of a should be f double prime of a. And this will allow me to figure out the formula for q of x, right? That we use like the properties of the tangent line that we knew a point that goes through in the slope to get the, the equation of L of x. And we're going to use the same idea here, that every quadratic is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, and then we can use these to solve for um, what the coefficient should be. Um, I'm already using a here, so I need to use different letters, but I can use uh, b, c, and d, right? So q of x is of the form, say, bx squared plus cx plus d, and I want to satisfy each of these. So, like, if I plug in a for x, I should get f of a. So f of a should be the same as q of a, which is a squared b plus um, a times c plus d. And on the other hand, I know what the derivative is, that q prime of x is going to be you know, 2bx plus c. So that means that q prime of a is going to be 2ab plus c, and that should be the same as f prime of a. And then finally, I know what the second derivative is, that if q of x is of this form, then this is the first derivative, so the second derivative is the derivative of this. So this means that um, when I take the derivative of this with respect to x, I'm just going to get 2b. And this means that q double prime of a is 2b. That should be the same as f double prime of a. So from here, I get what um, b needs to be b needs to be f double prime of a over 2. And if I keep going, I can figure out what c and d need to be. So we can solve for um, b, c, and d this way. And it turns out that If you sort of factor things nicely, q of x has a pretty nice form, that q of x is going to have um, first coefficient f double prime of a over 2 times x minus a squared plus f prime of a times x minus a plus f of a. And you might notice that, like, this is the linearization, right, that this is L of a. So what we're doing is we're taking our best linear approximation and sort of adding this like quadratic to it that makes it work as perfectly as possible. Right. So we can actually figure out what the form of the best quadratic approximation is. So we're going to use this in a second.